he became limited in what he could do. He became limited in his outdoor activities. The, the court will note in the records that uh, his spine was severely injured. And if he continued to do his normal outdoor activities, anything strenuous, there was a possibility of the spine being uh, broken and perhaps Danny would be paralyzed. As a result of this, he was he became pretty much housebound it, to the extent that he played games and watched TV. His parents um, found that and they decided, well, we're going to have to, the evidence will show, you know, allow him to look at video games, play them a little bit more than, than was his normal. The evidence will also show that in, in that regard, the parents bought him an Xbox with which to play these video games. And he became, while he was in the house, while he was convalescing, he became immersed and he became somewhat addicted to these video games where he was watching them uh, quite, quite a lot. Uh, evidence will show that he did indeed go over to friends' homes, uh, other boys that he was acquainted with and went to school with and knew. And they would watch video games virtually all day and into the night. Uh, his attitude throughout this was, uh, was uh, do this ordeal, even though he had the staph infection, was, was normal and without any dramatic person, personality changes or any demeanor that would change. During the course of this illness, during the summer of 2007 and into the fall, these games he continued to play them. And he be became more interested and more focused on video games. During this period, there was a series of games that came out. They're called Halo series, Halo 1, 2, and 3. His parents uh, laid rules down. And these rules were such that uh, Danny Peckard was not allowed to see these games. And there were a number of reasons, they were, one of which they were rated mature. And the other of which, these games were such that uh, they showed uh, graphic violence and they showed premise some sexual innuendo that was unacceptable to the house. Um, he, uh, Danny was, uh, had, had seen Halo 1 and 2. On the 24th of September, the uh, Halo 3 came out. The game that the prosecutor speaks about that was put in the lockbox. Danny had anticipated seeing this game and obtaining it for approximately a year, a year and a half. He had great, uh, he had a great hope that he'd get the game and be able to play it. The rules in this case pr did not permit him to do so. Even though he was prevented from from playing the games by his parents' rules, he nevertheless kept an attitude without anger, without threats, without violence towards his parents or anybody else. He, in all respects, once again, was a normal 16-year-old boy, even though the rules were laid down. The evidence will show that he accepted these rules, didn't like them, but he accepted them. And he conducted himself as he has in the past with respect and care to his parents. Evidence will show that this Halo 3 was, uh, was a game that, uh, that he had the urge to obtain. Evidence will show that he snuck out of the house one night, as all 16-year-olds do, went out, bought the game. He came back, and his mother caught him with the game. It was immediately seized and impounded and confiscated. It was put in a, in a lockbox that the prosecutor talked about, and unknown to Danny, um, it, it had been locked up and uh, taken away. Additional t evidence and testimony were revealed that at no time prior to Danny's obtaining Halo, during the time it was confiscated, was there a display of anger, violence, or threats towards either of his parents. Instead, he calmly tried to explain why the game should be allowed. There was a didactic discussion, I, the evidence will show between his father and mother and Danny as to why that game should be allowed. I think to the extent that he even went into Christian websites uh, in an effort to convince his parents. His demeanor in all respects during this time and during the, the time that uh, the discussions about why he should and should not play the game was um, remained the same, without rancor, without anger, without threats, and without violence. Finally, because he wanted to, he persisted in seeing this, wanting this game, um, he was, uh, he was uh, asked to leave the home because he did not want to abide by the rules. At this point, he went over to his friend John Johnson's house for about two and a half days, I believe a Friday to a Sunday. And it was from the 24th until approximately midday the 26th. He goes over to John Johnson's house, friend with whom he had played video games incessantly into the night. 
They went over and looked at Halo 3, played it virtually 24-7, played it all night into the, into the morning. Testimony of John Johnson will indicate that. Testimony will also indicate that at no time did Danny indicate to Mr. Johnson that he was irritated at his family, mad at his family that the rules were laid down, and made any threats or any violence or said anything against them regarding those rules and his playing of the video game in the house. Um, he was always particularly close to his mother and father. He, up to, the, up, up to the 20th of October, there was never a moment of, of violence towards them, threats, anger, aggressiveness at all. And ultimately, on 20 October, is why we're here. This awful, terrible tragedy. Uh, at approximately 7.15, Danny Petrick, without a distinct process of reasoning, without a scheme, and after a momentary consideration, shot and killed his mother and shot his father. And uh, without prior calculation and design. The state's theory on counts one and four, I disagree with. And I think the court will disagree with once you find all the evidence that it was something other than with prior calculation and design. It is some other sort of, of murder, perhaps. And I would wish the court to consider that. And uh, I know you do, you'll make a fair and uh, equitable decision in this regard. Thank you, Your Honor.